This is a packet of marine collagen. Marine because it comes from fish. Collagen is the human body's most abundant protein. It makes up one third of all the protein we have. It is found in skin, hair, bones, tendons, ligaments, and even nails. It forms the foundational structure of those things. Unfortunately, as we age, our bodies produce less collagen. This is why our skin wrinkles, our bones and joints become weak, air thins out. So there is now a growing popularity of collagen supplements. Unfortunately, collagen is not made by plants, so it can only come from animal sources. Or perhaps in the near future, from yeast that has been genetically modified with human DNA. But let's ask a more basic question. Do I need collagen supplements? Not really. Because while our ability to make collagen goes down with age, you can still partially fix that problem by consuming more of what is the topic of this video, protein. The essential micronutrient that if you are American or European, you don't need to consume as much you do right now. If you are Indian, you need more than you think you are eating. Protein, of which collagen is the most abundant kind, is a foundational building block of all life. All our muscles, bones, skin, and every enzyme in every cell in your body is protein. Proteins are very complex and functionally sophisticated molecules that are built from smaller building blocks called amino acids. There are 20 or so amino acids, of which 11 we can make from scratch inside our body. Nine of them cannot be made by our body. So these are termed essential amino acids because you have to get them from your food. Let's first answer the basic question. How do our bodies make everything from muscles to bones and enzymes from these amino acid building blocks? One of the most astonishing things about life is how our cells make the hundreds of thousands of different proteins required to keep us alive. And it does that using biology's version of software. Every cell has DNA, which is like a set of programming instructions. When the cell needs to make a protein, it reads the relevant section of DNA. This reading process is called transcription and results in a molecule called RNA. Think of RNA as a portable version of the DNA instructions, like how we always use a photocopy of a document so that we don't damage the original. The cell then uses a machine called a ribosome to read the RNA. As the ribosome reads the RNA, specific sequences of genetic code map to specific amino acids which are freely lying around the cell. The ribosome picks up the right amino acid and attaches it to the end of the protein being built. This building process is called translation. So in a sense, the cell decodes DNA instructions to create proteins. Now here is a fact that will blow your mind. This mapping of genetic code to amino acids, there is only one version in all life on earth. Whether you are human or worm or bacteria, DNA to protein follows the exact same rules. All life on earth came from a single ancestor. So when people say things like, it's in your genes, it's not that simple. DNA only has instructions to make proteins. Let's focus on the part that is immediately relevant to us. How does every cell have the amino acids it needs to make proteins? It comes from what you eat. If you don't eat enough protein, or more importantly, if you don't eat protein that contains enough of the essential amino acids, remember, we can make the rest of them, your body will not function very well. Which brings us to the next logical question. How much protein do I need to eat? Now this is a controversial question, because the honest answer is, it depends. A good starting point is what most food authorities around the world recommend, which is about 0.8 grams of protein 
for every kilogram of body weight daily. For a 70 kg adult who does not do much exercise, that's 58 grams of protein daily. But if you're an athlete who regularly damages your muscles, meaning the body needs to rebuild that muscle, you might need 1.2 grams of protein per kg of body weight daily. If you're a fashion model or a bodybuilder looking to build visible muscle mass, then even 1.5 to 2 grams of protein per kg of body weight might be required. Older people can also benefit from increasing protein intake to one gram per kilogram of body weight. Remember the role of collagen? Anything more than two grams per kilogram is considered excessive and also if you have kidney problems, do not increase protein intake without speaking to your doctor. Which then brings us to the next question. What foods are rich in proteins? Let's start with animal sources because we are animals and animals tend to contain proteins with the essential amino acids in the proportions that we need. This list is in decreasing order of preference. Now I realize that people have strong opinions about what they eat and finding your favorite source of protein slightly lower down this list might seem upsetting but remember it is still okay to eat what you want to eat. This list is based on expert sources that combine nutritional quality, long-term health impact, and importantly, sustainability. In comparison to plant protein, animal protein has serious sustainability challenges. Top tier of animal protein, poultry, chicken, duck, turkey, seafood, and eggs. Second tier, dairy. Again, the expert recommendation is to consume less direct milk which is hard to digest, but more yogurt and cheese like paneer as you grow older. Third tier, red meat. Unprocessed mutton, pork or beef, best consumed on special occasions. Fourth tier, processed meats, bacon, sausages, etc. Consume as little as possible because very regular consumption is linked to long-term colorectal cancer risk. One thing to keep in mind when consuming animal sources of protein is that they almost always come with fat. 70% of the calories in paneer come from fat, not protein. Red meat is also high on saturated fat, so keep that in mind when you eat them. Now let's get to plant sources. And before we get to the list, let's address a very common myth. Many people, particularly meat eaters, believe that you cannot get enough protein from plants. Even many vegetarians believe that even if they can get protein, plant protein is not complete protein. This is not true. Individual plant sources of protein do not contain all essential amino acids in the correct proportions that we need. This is why when it comes to plant-based protein, you must always eat a lot of different sources of protein so that together, you get all the amino acids in the proportions you need. Also, getting more of your protein from plants is better for the planet. With that myth out of the way, let's do the protein quality list for plant sources. Top tier, dal, legumes. And within this, you can put soy, chana, and black urad at the top. Green gram, which is moong, masoor, and tur in the middle, and ragda, peace at the bottom. Second tier, nuts and seeds, almonds, cashews, walnuts, pumpkin, melon seeds, flax seed, etc. Third tier, and this will surprise you, grains, particularly whole grains, wheat, rice, millets, oats. Yes, these have pro, not a lot, but it all adds up. Fourth tier, most vegetables and fruits, very small amounts, but still there. The pulp of a tomato, is rich in glutamic acid, which is an amino acid, which is why it's so delicious because our tongues detect glutamates with the umami taste bud. So the key to plant-based protein is to eat a mix of many things. Lots of dal, some nuts and seeds, moderate amounts of grains, and lots of vegetables. Now a key point to note, it is still possible that no matter how diverse your plant-based diet, you might still end up being short 
on some of the essential nine amino acids. So this is why most Indian vegetarians rely on one important animal source, dairy. A balanced plant-based meal and a cup of yogurt or paneer is complete protein. I do want to make a side point. If you are privileged enough, you can get high quality protein while being fully vegan as well. It might involve protein supplements and other processed plant protein and that is fine too. At the same time, I also want vegetarians and vegans to appreciate the fact that for a lot of poorer people in India, a rice plus meat curry gets you all the protein you need, while a vegetarian meal needs more diversity of dishes, something that people may not have the time or money to get. Eat what works for you and don't judge others. And like we did with animal protein, it's important plant-based protein also tends to come with carbohydrates. Da is mostly carbs, only 15% protein. So keep that in mind when you eat. Likewise, nuts and seeds come with fats. Very healthy fats, but fats nonetheless. So let's use all of this knowledge to debunk and answer some of the most common protein myths. Am I eating enough protein? If you're Indian and vegetarian, the data seems to suggest probably no. So perhaps it's a good idea to start measuring how much protein you are eating. I will make a separate video on how to count protein by just looking at your plate. And if you're not getting enough protein, don't just start increasing protein intake without reducing something else like carbohydrates or fats. Remember, if you eat too many calories, be it carbs, protein or fat, you will put on weight. If it is hard for you to find a regular unprocessed food source of protein, then consider whey or plant-based protein supplements. Which brings me to the next myth. Is whey protein safe? Simple answer, yes, it is absolutely safe. Think about this. You're okay with milk. And we separate cream from milk, churn it into butter, clarify that butter into ghee, which is 100% milk fat. And we are absolutely fine with that. So if we did the same process and isolated 100% milk protein, why on earth would it be unsafe? That said, if you have dairy allergies, you might want to consider plant-based protein supplements. Those have the same proportion of essential amino acids as whey protein and are consumed around the world by vegans. The only other thing to keep in mind is pre-existing kidney problems. If you have them, talk to your doctor before starting whey protein supplements. One is 25 grams of protein. Just add to water and drink. And if you don't like that, add some bananas and a small amount of milk. One last thing to keep in mind, buy from a reputed brand. I will link to Dr. Abby Phillips' research data in the description box on the quality and safety of various whey protein brands in India. Will soy protein make me girly? This comes from a pervasive myth that since soya has phyto or plant-based estrogen, it will make men less manly. On a lighter note, that doesn't sound like a bad idea for the planet. But on a serious note, there is no evidence that consumption of soy or pea protein has any effect on testosterone levels in men. I mean, one quarter of the world's population in East and Southeast Asia consumes soy daily. Clearly, it has not had any effect on their ability to, well, have such a large population. How to get enough protein as a vegetarian? Let me summarize what I've already said before in this video. Eat a range of plant-based sources. Dal, rajma, chana, tofu, oats, green vegetables in your regular food. And if you're okay with dairy, add yogurt and paneer to this as well. Consider adding supplements if that is not enough. Whey or soy-based protein supplements. You can also add things like peanut butter, nuts and seeds to your snacking habits to add to your protein intake. You can also consider plant-based meat alternatives. There are soy-based chicken patties and those are better choices than a potato cutlet in your veggie burger. Let me end this video with a fascinating story. In 1969, a meteorite from outer space landed in Australia. And when scientists investigated 
what that piece of rock contained, they were surprised to find amino acids, the building blocks of protein. Now, that's not the really surprising part. You see, most organic molecules, including amino acids, can come in right-handed configurations or left-handed configurations. And for some reason, life on Earth seems to prefer the left-handed versions more than the right-handed versions. We don't know why. So the real surprise from the Murchison meteorite is that the proportion of left and right-handed amino acids was the same as we find on Earth, meaning more of the left, less of the right. Leading scientists to wonder if this is a more basic feature of all life and not just life on Earth. So it's possible that the amino acids that make up our bodies originally came from outer space. Oh, one of the amino acids they found in this meteorite, glutamic acid. Yes, MSG from outer space. Eat more protein. I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.